Hello you guys, it's the headphoneaddict.com here and today I'm doing a comparison slash shootout review between two pairs of headphones from Sennheiser. On your left here you've got the Sennheiser HD 600s, whereas on the right you've got the Sennheiser HD 650s. So let me start off by saying that I have done individual reviews of the two, so I'll put in a couple of annotations at the top here if you want to go and check out the individual reviews for the two headphones, whereas in this video I'm going to talk more about them comparatively and relatively to one another. So let's start off by talking or giving the Sennheiser HD 600s a little bit of an introduction then over to the Sennheiser HD 650s. Firstly, these are a tad cheaper than those. These uh, are around 100 bucks less, but prices obviously vary over uh, various markets. So, but these are actually cheaper than those. However, the audio community is pretty divided. Many people prefer prefer the 600s over the 650s. So, what you want is really coming down to preferences. These uh, 650s were actually Sennheiser's earlier flagship models before they came out with both Sennheiser HD 800 and 700s. So these are the third model down now, as both of the HD 800s and 700s has come out. So let's talk about their similarities first. Both of them just by looking at them we see that they're pretty similar uh, the driver housing is pretty similar they're both dynamic open back headphones so won't offer much isolation uh, the headbands are a bit different uh, in style however uh, pretty similar overall this is some kind of granite this is well some sort of type of silver finish and they both have the logo on top uh, the head could the Air pads are also pretty similar as you can see I even think that they're interchangeable so they're basically very similar as you can see here on the headband thing these kind these uh, 600s have some discrete headbands whereas this is more continuous on the 650s you can see this bump up here that because when you were in your mother's womb and your head grew together you maybe had a bump created at the top of your head where your skull <laughs> skull met uh, met each other and now I'm sure that you took your hand up to feel if you had a bump on the top of your head so it's a comfortability thing and you also see that this is up here uh, they are also huge headphones so they will fit like Godzilla if you wanted a pair of headphones and that goes for both models and they can be uh, if you think that they are a tight fit you can basically just draw them out like that and they will most likely fit you and they are indeed very comfortable now the pads they are a bit shallow so for some people the air can be touching this um, uh, foaming or padding inside here so if you're uh, hysterical about your ears touching these are maybe not for you but I don't think that should uh, put uh, put you off from getting these as they're both great headphones so look wise they're pretty similar they also both have detach the detachable cables and uh, they are also interchangeable so if you're into aftermarket cables and stuff like that uh, it's pretty easy to get the uh, more expensive cables I've just run stock cables as I'm not a big cable guy no pun intended or reference to Jim Carrey there hopefully so when they are so similar and costs are well these are cheaper and why are people divided about them well basically the reason is that they have quite different sound characteristics so let's get into that the lows on these and the lows on those are pretty similar to be honest um, these are probably a bit more detailed than the Sennheiser HD 650s at least that's the overall impression you get uh, when listening to them 
and the reason might be that these have more treble and highs than the 650s. I would say that these are sharper cans whereas the Sennheiser HD 650s are smoother so it would be like looking at a photography where the photography is sharp here and uh, more blurry hair not in a negative way it gives a lot of musicality when uh, notes flow over one another and uh, gives you a flowing uh, feeling about the music I really enjoy it to be honest but if I wanted to watch a movie and use headphones I'd go with the 600s any day as um, I feel that the 600s are much better for movies as this type of flow uh, doesn't really mix well with uh, movies where you have explosions and a lot of stuff going on so that's a note if you're going to use them for movies <coughs> then we come to the mid-range the mid-range on these are neutral and uh, cold I would say meaning that uh, they're not emphasized in any way or you you get you basically don't have an emphasis in particular on the mid-range whereas on the 650s the, the mid-range is very warm it has that great bass impact that uh, bass heads really enjoy you know with the thump and uh, that's something that I really enjoy about this is that warm and lush mid-range when it comes to highs as I said the 600s have more highs than the 650s these roll off earlier whereas this has a couple of spikes which I will show you in uh, the specification sections of the two later uh, so that's basically if you want a head pair of headphones which are neutral and sharper around the edges you want to go with the Sennheiser HD 600s also if you want to uh, listen to a lot of movies on them whereas you can use these for movies I'm not saying that these are not suitable for movies however I do prefer the 600s the 600s are also warmer in the mid-range so if you're a mid-range maniac that loves that thumping bass these are the ones for you and uh, the highs if you're I wouldn't say that the highs on the 600s are etched or uh, stressing or uh, frustrating in, 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 in any way uh, but these are much smoother headphones everything is just a nice flow of musicality I would say whereas these are more analytical and these have details though so I'm not saying that they don't have details I'm just saying that these are sharper and clearer so what you want basically comes down to if you want dark sounding smooth headphones with a warm mid-range or a neutral pairs of pair of headphones with a neutral mid-range and um, sharper edges more crisp pair of headphones so that's up to you I really enjoy both of them very much and uh, well I've run them on uh, several amplifiers one of them being the uh, this one which is uh, Asus Exonor Essence 1 amplifier and DAC. I've also run them on the tube amplifier from Wu, the WA6SE tube amplifier with uh, tons, of, tons of different tubes and I also run it on a reference grade uh, level uh, Grace Design M903 headphone amplifier and DAC so I think that uh, they all sound great on uh, amplifiers if you have enough power because they do require power having a nominal impedance of around uh, 300 ohms it's variable so they have a nominal impedance at 1 kilohertz uh, reported to be 300 ohms and they have a sensitivity of uh, 102 decibels so uh, you really need a headphone amplifier to play these and obviously since they don't offer any isolation you want your listening environment listening environment to be as quiet as possible so now let's go into some frequency response charts and stuff like that and uh, see how 
see how what I just said relates to that. Okay, so time to get that technical. What we're looking at here is a frequency response chart of the Sennheiser HD 600s. And uh, please don't let your eyes just glare over the chart uh, with a big question mark on your face. I'm going to explain it at my best. However, I'm not a technical engineer and there might be viewers that know far more about these things than I do. So if you're more knowledgeable than me in this field, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below if I slip up or say something incredibly stupid. So what are we going to do in the technical section? Well, we're going to read the frequency response chart of Sennheiser HD 600 and the frequency response chart of the Sennheiser HD 650. We're also going to superimpose the two on the same chart and uh, look at some differences. Lastly, we'll finish off by looking at the impedance diagram or impedance curve of both the Sennheiser 600 and 650 along with a couple of other headphones for reference. But Let's get back to the first diagram or chart, which were the frequency response chart of the Sennheiser HD 600s. As you can see here on the vertical axis, we have the amplitude of the signal measured in decibels, or basically you can uh, label this as the volume. On the horizontal axis or X axis, as you might re remember from math, we have the frequencies in Hertz. So volume here, frequency here. Low frequency means bass. Higher frequencies is, uh, uh, well, high frequencies. Siblings, uh, female vocals go up here and stuff like that. So as you might or might not be aware, human hearing has a range from around 20 Hertz, which is here, to around 20 Hertz. 20,000 Hertz or 20 kilohertz, which is here. As you grow older, the uh, range narrows and soon you'll be in a retirement home with like this range and big fat glasses with huge eyes behind them. So <laughs> take care of your hearing. So what are we going to say about this thing? Well, if we look here in the mid-range part, we see that it's uh, not as uh, variable around here than, say, from around 100 hertz and downward. So if you have some deep bass playing down here, uh, you will note that the sound of the bass is lower, the volume is lower than something playing up here. So that's basically how you can think of it when looking at these things. If it were perfectly linear, you would have the same volume on all frequencies, whereas on variable curves like this, you have drop-offs in volume at certain frequencies and certain spikes on certain frequencies. So that's basically it really. So we see here that there is a spike here around uh, 1000, 2000, 3000, between 3, 4, 3, 4000, and then it starts dropping off again here. This is a logarithmic scale, by the way. So now we looked at this and uh, you understand how to read it. And then we just, just swiftly looked at look at the Sennheiser HD 650 diagram and we see the same thing. They look pretty similar but here there was a spike in the uh, 600s which is not here. And then we superimpose the two and we see the differences. Here we have the uh, 650s in blue and the 600s in red. And as we can see up here the 600s has a spike here whether whereas the 650 rolls off and they have an equal spike here and then the 650s really goes uh, down in volume whereas the HD 600 spikes upwards. 
so this can give the impression of better highs on the um, uh, 600s as opposed to the 650s some might not like this bike and feel that it's uh, fatiguing but as they grow older and their hearing deteriorates they'll not hear that spike anymore and it will not be a problem for them so that's an important thing when uh, reading reviews online the age of the person that's writing the review is of importance because human hearing generally deteriorates and when they say that the highs are uh, not as etched and stuff like that you as a teenager might perceive it otherwise so just a thing to have in mind there are obviously many more variables that plays into subjective meanings of sound but that's just one of them here we have the impedance curve and as we can see here uh, both uh, both uh, of uh, Sennheiser HD 600s, this time in blue, and 650s here in red, have variable impedance curves, whereas the Audio Technica and Odyssey LCD 3s have linear impedance curves. What this basically means is that the loads that the uh, Sennheisers require from the headphone amplifier varies across the frequency uh, frequency spe spectrum so here we see that the load is much higher than on uh, these frequencies and that goes for both and we also see that uh, the uh, Sennheiser HD 600 uh, goes all the way up to 550 ohm impedance at around 100 Hertz and that the uh, 650s uh, spike up here in uh, 50 is it 60 60 Hertz so that's also something to take note of on and generally at lower frequencies headphones require more power to be driven sufficiently because uh, uh, lower frequencies uh, require more power because uh, the diaphragm and well there is just more um, there it's m more energy goes into the process of moving air moving those diaphragms so that's the reason why you should take note of this and this basically means that you need a good amplifier to be able to drive them efficiently and that's all that i have to say about this thing